Hello and welcome to Sobricks. I'm Adam and this is Sobricks. This is my channel for reviewing Lego sets and building them and other Lego related stuff. In this video I'm going to be taking a look at the new Lego Speed Champions Mercedes AMG G63 and Mercedes AMG SL63. This is set number 76924. It has 808 pieces, and I paid $45 for this set. So this is one of the new Speed Champions for the summer of 2024. I believe it came out June 1st, alongside the um, Lamborghini kind of Gran Turismo concept car. Uh, and also, I think the Aston Martin... Um, I think it was Aston Martin kind of two pack for a maybe a pace car and a Formula One car or something like that. I can't remember exactly, but uh, this is one of the ones I was most excited about. We've seen the price increases on the Speed Champions for this year. I've talked about them on the videos I made for them, and the two packs for these are sort of in line with the price changes, but end up being a pretty good value. So for a single car, a lot of times now, um, in 2023 and 2024, I believe, or maybe just 2024, they uh, Speed Champions went up to $27 for a single pack. And if we multiplied that by two, we would get $54. Uh, so these are cheaper um you know if it's 45 dollars, then maybe each of these is 2250 roughly and this one in particular is very big it's a big box uh it's bigger than i remember a lot of other speed champions box being even other two packs and it also has kind of the the g-wagon i think they call this like the big kind of suv looking thing here which i'm really excited about i did look at the speed champions the eight wide which had um, it was a Dodge, I believe, and it, or maybe it was a Ford Explorer. Yeah, the Dodge, I think, had maybe a dragster or something. And I'd have to double check I, I, and go through my old videos. But there haven't been a ton of Speed Champions in the 8-wide format that are like SUV-type vehicles. Um, not only that, 808 pieces for uh, $45 seems pretty good. I think Speed Champions are one of my favorite themes, um, and they consistently impress, and this is one that I'm really excited about. So in this video, I'm going to open this up, I'm going to put this together, and then I'm going to share my thoughts on it. So while I build, I will speed the video up, and then I'll slow it back down to review this set. So until then, enjoy! Okay, so while we look at the build for this LEGO Speed Champions Mercedes AMG G63 and Mercedes AMG SL63, this Speed Champions 2-pack, I just wanted to say thanks for watching, and then remind you, if you like this video, click the thumbs up. If you like my other videos, click the subscribe button. That helps me a lot. And then I wanted to talk about the build. This build actually took me longer than I thought. There's a lot of pieces in this set, and uh, there's a lot of really good stuff. So we're starting off with the drop top, the yellow one. This is the SL63. And we do start with that kind of eight wide speed champion starter brick kind of chassis piece. And building up the rear end of this is actually pretty straightforward, but I liked how it was done. Uh, there, there, some of the curves uh, around the back are really, really nice, even if they're relatively basic, a lot of studs on top. Um, and then we can move on to the front and eventually the doors and everything. We add the front axle. And there's some really interesting stuff up front with some kind of upside down building, some interesting connections using a like ratchet hinge joint there there are stickers in the set but not that many and uh, a lot of prints which is really nice the little sub assemblies for the side doors area there including some stickers for the door handles and then we can kind of finish up the hood and any internal details as well as the front bumper there which does have some nice stuff you can see the headlight pieces on those kind of angled slopes things are printed which is really nice nice little sub assembly here for the grill area uh, to kind of get that classic like rounded sort of looking grill which I really appreciate it and then we finish this up with uh, the the windscreen and add on the wheels and then we can move on to the second vehicle in this set so 
Um, this one's the G-Wagon, the G63. It's kind of a, a SUV type vehicle, and this is really cool. So we start out with some Technic here. We don't have a typical chassis. Um, they do use some one by five plates, some one by three, um, lots of different kind of interesting off stud or e, uh, sorry odd stud count um, width here and we spend a lot of time kind of building out the base of this which does use a lot of pieces it was really really fun uh, enjoyable to build i did realize i put something together wrong and i had to uh, fix that at a certain point we had on eight of these hinges these are going to be used to make kind of that brick built or you know tile built kind of fender there and we kind of have the basic uh shape for the chassis for the the floor of this vehicle and then we can start working on some of the internal details here there's a lot of internal structure there's also four spots to sit minifigures which we'll see in a little bit we add on some of these side assemblies some of the cargo area in the trunk uh, a little bit of stuff up at the front and again we're kind of progressively building this out a little wider and a little wider sometimes by less than a full stud in width which i thought was uh, done really really well some interesting building and techniques with some good connections up at the front kind of under the hood and they get even better when we add on the headlights and the kind of front bumper area there but here we're working on the rear bumper this is a whole sub assembly which does have the majority of the stickers in this uh, in this model for the uh, AMG G63 here we add that onto the back kind of build that out a little bit and then we can start kind of finalizing the uh, side details here we're going to start working on the front bumper which is really cool so some upside down stuff some nice piece usages some nice connections with different bar elements and then again getting that really kind of uh, identifiable sort of round-ish grill there that is similar but not the exact same as the one on the drop top which is really cool we add the hood element and then we can start working again on kind of building up the side panels here using some of those window pieces which is really nice and then we will work on the roof there's still a lot of pieces left in this there is a good amount of space here to sit at least four figures plus some cargo uh, which is excellent and uh, so there's a lot of empty space but there's a lot of good building uh, all throughout this as well we can add on the front windscreen as well as some of the kind of roof stuff that uh, then we're putting together here for the sub assembly for the roof and then we'll add the tires and that's it so uh really enjoy this thanks for watching and now on to my review for this set okay so that is the new lego speed champions mercedes amg g63 and the mercedes amg sl63 this is uh pretty impressive i i really really liked putting these together i'm a big fan of speed champions i was really excited about this two pack um i was debating on saving this one for the last one i was pretty blown away by the lambo v12 turbo you know gran turismo uh, car um, i really really liked that one and then the other one that's the aston martin like formula one car and uh, I don't know what they call it. It's not a pace car, but it's like a safety car or so whatever. That two pack, I'm a little like less excited about. But and so I thought maybe I would cover that one before this one. But I did uh, decide to go in for this one, and I'm I'm pretty happy I did. Uh, I just I like Speed Champions a lot, and uh, in the la the last several releases have been pretty top notch in my opinion. So we will get into this, and the first thing we will take a look at is the minifigure because you do get some you get two minifigures for this set these are okay so the first one this is the one that you build when you build uh you put together when you put together the drop top here the um amg ls 63 so that's the yellow one so they do have the oversized wrench there minifigure here looks like they have a kind of a driving jacket or something like that these aren't these are kind of more street vehicles than like race vehicles so it's not like a full racing outfit or whatever but uh, this has some nice details nice little uh, pops of color and maybe a label up there it doesn't appear to have anything written on it so it's not licensed uh, well at least from the front looking at the back of it we do have the AMG 
kind of logo there, which is good, kind of up on the upper back on the shoulder area. From the front, the face is okay, kind of has some aviator sunglasses there, a little bit of a reflection there. Uh, hair piece is fine, no alternate face for this character, no helmet or anything like that either. Again, it's kind of a, a street vehicle, so um, this, this makes sense. No alternate face. I would like to get a face that has the sunglasses taken off generally. I just think that's uh, a better for play and, and otherwise. So I do like that and um, or I would have liked that. And then uh, the other one, which is the one that you put together when you do the um, AMG G63, the big black kind of SUV here, is this one. Now, this is another one. It has kind of this AMG sort of logo with like the half tree there. And I don't know what is on the other side of their uh, emblem or logo there, but uh, something. And that's a good print, probably an exclusive print for the torso. Back of the uh, torso doesn't have a lot. For both of these, there's nothing on the midsection, the legs, or the arms, so uh, that's okay. This one, again, we have a similar kind of thing. Some different facial features, maybe some lipstick on there, different hairstyle. Uh, we do have the aviators, again, pretty similar, but but different. These are different faces for sure, even if the glasses are really similar. And then uh, again, no alternate face. Would have liked to see one without the uh, sunglasses on. And these are fine minifigures. Like, I, I get that they're sort of pedestrian or whatever, and so that works. They don't need to have printed legs, printed arms, anything like that necessarily. I think, you know, these, these prints, this one in particular uh, with the kind of full AMG logo, I think is quite good. There's some good detail in there, uh, and uh, this one is, is fine uh, overall, but it is licensed, so that's good. And then besides the minifigures, we have two vehicles here. So I'm going to start with the yellow one, which is the first one you build, and um, is the Mercedes-AMG uh, SL63. So this is a convertible type vehicle here and uh, this is the first one you build I was not terribly excited about this one and I ended up liking it more than I thought I would uh, and I think it, it looks better in person than maybe some of the pictures showed it's not perfect maybe but I think it is uh, pretty well done so I, I am excited about that I'm not super keen on the color I think it makes sense for this vehicle like looking at reference photos and stuff like that it is striking and very bold um, but it's just not my particular kind of color that I would gravitate towards but this is really cool it is an eight wide speed champion here uh, and it's about as long as some other ones it kind of depends you know the Lambo here is a concept car but those are you know similar in in length in a lot of ways maybe a little bit longer but um, you know that could be adjusted based on some of the angles some of the things on the Lambo there and this is really cool. There is stickers in this set, but not that many, actually, all things considered. You know, for some of the more racing vehicles that have a lot of other uh, logos in, on them from different sponsorships and, and partnerships and stuff, uh, like, for example, F1 or NASCAR or whatever, those have a lot more stickers. But um, in general, this one is pretty reasonable. So we see 11 stickers here. Uh, and that's not that bad. So I'll take some time to point those out. I think the first one you apply is in the kind of center console here. So we have a sticker on a slope there. We do have a sticker for the AMG kind of emblem on the hood. Uh, on the side, we have a sticker here for kind of the door handle maybe. A uh, little sticker there and then a sticker down here. The other side is the same, so one, two, three. Looking at the rear, we have a sticker for the Mercedes logo on the back and then the AMG kind of logo where in the license plate area. And I think that's all of them. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. And maybe I'm missing one more. Uh, we will see. But there's there's not that. Oh, yeah, there is one more that I'm missing, I, I believe. 
and that is one under here which again maybe shows some of the engine this is one of the features um, but that is the last sticker I was forgetting there so not too too many and because those were all stickers that means that the headlights are printed using these nice slope pieces these kind of one by ones here on the uh, or these cheese wedges here those are printed and there are different prints on either side you do get an extra one of each of those um, this one on the front is uh, a print there uh, that little black uh, kind of strip on a yellow uh, plate there is a print the Mercedes logo is a print the kind of dash logo here with music and navigation and whatever else this little screen is a print and then the rear uh, lights on the back are also printed on these um, nice rounded pieces these kind of rounded slope curve brick pieces there so there are prints in that which is which is great um, great to see I'm glad we didn't have to put stickers here you know this is really nice the printing goes very very close to the edge of this piece which is awesome and, and same down on this corner here which sometimes they say they can't do other times they say you know are they it appears that they can do that these um, are maybe some of the closest I've seen like a printing get to an edge of a piece so that's really really cool this one starts with a kind of the eight wide speed champion base here kind of the starter brick and you attach the rear axle kind of first and start building a lot of this up at the rear for the most part this one the SL 63 uh, you, it's a lot of straightforward building for the most part. You can see kind of around the um, like fender areas there. We do have just some you know studs on top, some plates using some cheese wedges here. All throughout the rear we have that. Um, so this is a lot of straightforward stuff. There's a little bit of studs on the side uh, and there's some interesting building at the back. I did really like how the exhaust was put together um, ultimately and like and using this piece and stuff. I thought that was all quite good quite interesting and then um, I think all the curves back here are really really nice this is an interesting piece that is relatively new it's kind of this corner dome piece and we use those at the rear with some bracket pieces and those work really really nicely it looks great from the back you kind of get that uh, little curve in there but from the side you know it, it just looks like this is gonna kind of continue curving around which I think is really nice for the profile you do see a mold mark on this one I don't know if I swapped these around if I could avoid that but potentially so a lot of the building back here is pretty straight up um, there's no like trunk space in this or anything like that we do have kind of the impression of maybe where the um, top I don't know if this is a hard top I'm, I'm assuming it maybe is but um, or, or maybe not I, I don't know uh, but maybe we have the impression of that and I think the color blocking back here is all really really good but for the most part the building is pretty straightforward moving up to the kind of front area we do do the internals so I've already shown the sticker in there we do have the steering wheel here and kind of nice uh, seating stuff done and, and this is pretty cool because there is a seat in the back you can see those couple studs there so you could you know have three figures in here I believe um, and I just have to see if I can get them situated there we go uh, their arms are kind of in the way if I tuck their arms to the side you can move these seats back their construction is pretty easy there not too too many pieces but we can sit a person in the back and then you can also have a person on the driver's side and the passenger side so fitting three people in here is nice to see for you know this size of a vehicle and I'm glad they made that accommodation there and then moving towards the front or or rather like looking at the side still we do have some kind of standard stuff uh, some studs on the side some bracket usages some sideways building things some little sub assemblies here I always love how these kind of angled slope pieces come together the one's got the sticker the other one doesn't same on the other side that creates a really nice shape um, while I'm talking about it the color match on the stickers is not perfect uh, I don't know it might be a little bit hard to tell on camera but it's not perfect uh, and so it could be better but it's not the worst I've ever seen either so uh, that's something to make note of but a lot of this stuff uh, the doors area is pretty 
thin and we do use some of the inverted tiles on the inside which continues kind of this nice black interior there and also makes this really clean you don't see anti studs or the bottom of plates or anything in there and you know it keeps this while having enough space for two figures side by side keeps this within the kind of eight wide thing and even maybe a little narrower so I do like how these were put together and then the front again I think a lot of this is for the most part straightforward there are some interesting building techniques for example on the bottom here we have some upside down building that attaches with kind of a uh, ratchet piece there and it's not meant to move or articulate but that's kind of nice for this bottom part i think for the grill area they did a really really nice job using these kind of gunmetal gray sort of metallic uh, studs on the side to get that kind of rounded grill area and that whole sub assembly is attached in a pretty cool way and then of course like I said you can open up the hood so looking at the sub assembly for this there's a couple like uses of some hollow studs some clips a bar element and like a lot of stuff packed in here including using those pieces that I think are occasionally used to put something around a mini figure's neck it has like a hole on this side i wonder if i can just take this all out so we can kind of see that but like the you know hole there but is not a super solid thing like connection wise but then it has a stud on this side so these little like bracket pieces these l's on the side kind of hold everything together there and then we have these different clips on the back this is like one of the pieces with the uh, clip and the bar element and that's put through this like two-thirds brick into a hollow or maybe that's not even a hollow stud but another one of those gunmetal gray things there and then that connects to these two clips inside here and I, I think that's really really nice building techniques the effect is really really cool I loved how this grill looks and it looks great uh, in comparison with the one on the G63 um, but it, it looks great on its own too like I said there is a little bit of a sticker inside which is that same kind of uh, AMG emblem logo kind of thing that's in much better detail on the minifigure torso for uh, this figure here but we can see the sticker there so you get a little bit of internals you know I think overall the shaping of the front is pretty good we do get that kind of subtle change in height or depth with some um, studs on the side stuff and that's all really nice it is pretty flat all things considered you know so that does make it look pretty square but because there are good curves around here and there's really really nice curves around the back I think uh, it gets away with that a little bit because for the most part this thing is just the same kind of height almost all the way through here but they did a, a, a good job kind of accentuating some of the curves and the roundness that it does have which I I didn't expect to be done in the same way so I really liked how some of the stuff was done back here even underneath these printed pieces it looks pretty I would say like pretty standard it is a lot of like studs on top stuff but it, it's just some some nice things going on in there and then yeah still looking at the front like these little sub assemblies on the side with the cheese wedge that is printed that's all really really good there again kind of accentuating this curve here which is really nice uh, same on the other side overall I think that's uh, well done we do have the mirrors here and not too much else this does use the kind of standard um, dual molded speed champions wheels that I think I don't know if this is a new color for the um, for the rims for this it might be it might not be but they kind of have that pearl silver color for the rims and you can see if I pop out the uh, kind of thing there you can kind of see what that looks like so I, I, I they maybe they have used that before but I think it looks really nice here we just kind of get the little bit peeking through there and then the nice almost white wall looking kind of thing around the edge by the tire which is really good they all spin well and this is like pretty low to the ground pretty um, good profile I don't know I can't are these built just slightly different yeah I think there's a little bit of forward rake here um, and that 
is is good to see you can see this is kind of offset from the first or the, the front axle is a little bit um, when it's upside down like this at a, at a different height than the rear axle so you get a little bit of that there and the overall I think this is pretty straightforward Lego speed champion stuff for this kind of vehicle there's nothing crazy interesting about it I had a great time putting it together but it's just not like a mind-blowing model to me it still is better than I thought it would be so that's good uh, and as far as like pieces go you know this set has over 800 pieces uh, I'm thinking this one probably uses 250 to you know in that range probably and the rest are probably in the other vehicle um, which is about fine I, I don't know if this was a single car pack, if I would be super thrilled about this being $27. It's not as interesting to me as the Mustang Dark Horse or the Lamborghini Lambo Gran Turismo one or the McLaren Formula One car or some of the other, um, I think the Audi Quattro or whatever, some of the other more recent eight wide models that are in the Speed Champions line that came in at the $27 price point. If this was $27, I don't know how I would feel about it, but it is not. And so um, with everything kind of done here overall, it, it's pretty good. Then we can move on to the second vehicle. So this is a two pack and that is this Mercedes AMG G63 or what I think they call these G wagons. It's kind of this big SUV type thing. And this was the one I was crazy um, excited about and it paid off it really really delivered to me so I like this a lot um, personally I like the black color scheme I know some people were sort of iffy on it uh, I think it works really really well it also feels like maybe the color that I most see Mercedes you know G wagons um, like style louds in the real world so i feel like i see black ones more than anything uh, so this is really really cool and right away i think i was pretty impressed that this kind of is eight wide sort of it's it's a little bit wider at at various instances i thought it was going to be a lot wider i thought maybe it was going to be like 10 um, but we can see this big panel up top is a six by six and we go a little bit out uh, from that on the side and then when you add the wheels and the fenders and everything maybe it's a little bit wider but for the most part this is an eight wide vehicle and it, it's not too uh that much wider than even the um, AMG SL 63 here if we're looking at it kind of from the top it's you know it looks a bit a bit wider but I think a lot of that is because of the wheels sticking out a little bit and and that's impressive because when I was building this I wasn't like necessarily keeping track of everything but I was like holy cow so this is really cool the majority of the pieces are in here this is a heavy speed champions vehicle and it's really really well done so um, I guess I'll point out the stickers and the prints like I did. Here's the sticker sheet. Again, not terrible. Um, all things considered, uh, there's a couple, you know, there's a duplicate sticker here and, and just some other ones there. They're all on black, and so the color match is, is better, and they're not too, you know, too crazy or, or anything like that. There's some that I'm not super thrilled about and others that I think work really well the majority of these stickers can be found on the rear here so we do have kind of where the spare tire might be the Mercedes logo in there is a sticker the AMG logo over here is a sticker over here it says the G63 that is a sticker these kind of rear lights are stickers each uh, as is the AMG right there uh, and then looking at the front, like the other one, like the SL, uh, the headlight areas here are printed. This Mercedes logo is printed, so that's really good. We do have a big sticker on kind of the hood area there. And uh, I'm thinking that's kind of most of the ones that are visible right now. Uh, on the side, there aren't really any uh, stickers to be seen, but there are some other prints so this AMG right here is a print on the side of a plate 
there's another one of those on the other side I really like that and I think uh, that works well and then there is another sticker on the inside of the kind of uh, hood here so we can open that up and both of these the SL63 and the G63 open up like this and then we can see the sticker with the AMG thing there and the Mercedes logo kind of on the inside which again is is a nice little detail there uh, we can pop off the roof to see if there's like other stickers inside and I think there's just the one which is kind of for this center council piece on a you know cheese wedge there that has some uh, information some different stuff I'm trying to tell it looks like it's got some speedometers different things uh, a bunch of stuff there so that's a, another sticker and then while I have this off we can look in the inside of this this thing sits four people using the minifigure seats which i don't think they use these chair pieces that much in speed champions a lot of times they're like brick built ones or or done uh, a different way and this one is so big that we could fit you know four of those in here side by side and it looks great i like the white a lot same for kind of the center area there i like the white uh, a whole bunch and there's also kind of some cargo space back here so i like the different color in there and theoretically things could be put there uh, and I, I think that's nice it doesn't come with anything to put there specifically but something could be put there and i think that's pretty darn cool so lots of space in the interior and uh i was also a bit surprised to see like how high up the minifigures might sit in this just because uh of of everything that's going on because below the oh whoops guess I didn't have them studded down all the way so let's see if I can get them in here uh, and maybe it's a little tricky for me but you know maybe that'll do I can pop on the roof so you can see them when they're in there uh, looks good like that you can see them through the windscreen as well the windscreen is kind of the same darker translucent as the one over here the newer darker translucent you can see them on the side it looks like the window might be rolled down or, or whatever there and that's all pretty good but they are sitting very high and that's because there's a lot of stuff between you know the floor of the interior where the seats are which is probably about right here there's a lot of building that goes on beneath that which is crazy uh, while we're looking at it the roof is pretty simple just kind of uh, fits in like interlocks with some of these parts at the front without uh, studding down and it studs down a couple places on the back do use a big panel piece here which isn't as glossy as some of the other tiles so that doesn't look great that's maybe one of my least favorite things but uh, that's true for just these six by six pieces oftentimes and then uh, on the underside we do have a little bit of the just translucent there the clear pieces the studs on the back and and this one here we use uh some brackets some studs on the side stuff to put a bunch of these kind of tile panel pieces and they all kind of make this thing essentially i would say like seven wide or six and two thirds wide just for these uh panels like coming out a little bit which is really cool and a lot of this is built on odd numbered kind of stuff so there's a ton of jumpers used uh, and a ton of really really cool techniques because you can see as like the chairs we have the two studs for the seats and then one in the middle and then maybe one on the either side which it would be like seven studs sort of back here these tiles that are pretty well centered those are one by threes so there's a lot that goes into this especially changing it from like even to odd to even and back again which is really really impressive to me and I, and I liked building that a lot it was it was fun it kept it interesting and it's it's not super straightforward and I think you know trying to get this down to eight wide they really had to be innovative with some of that stuff so looking at the bottom you can kind of see how this starts it doesn't start with a starter brick or you know the kind of chassis piece here it's all 
brick built or panel built or you know plate built there you actually start by kind of doing this little sub assembly for the rear um, with a you know two by six and then this kind of technic rectangular brick with technicals around it uh, and you do one at the front as well and then you put a technic axle kind of all the way through that you put nine um, one by one bricks with the Texel, uh, sorry, the Technic axle hole uh, between the two of them, and you start building off of that, and then eventually you do add some stuff, you know, beneath that, which is like a lot of these one by five plates here, some one by threes in here, and then a lot of the, you know, one by three jumpers with the two studs in them to kind of build this out incrementally. So you can see kind of all the different ways that plates are offset underneath here you can see the underside of some of those jumpers some of this the stuff here so like the whole base of this to just kind of expand this out to get it to the appropriate width was really really impressive to me uh, I liked how they used these pieces it's actually the same piece that's used on the rear of the uh, SL 63 so this piece here which is kind of like it's got uh, two studs um, let me see kind of coming off this way of it uh, it's maybe hard to imagine there and we use several or are those the same piece no they're not even the same piece I don't think I'm just crazy but the way these fenders are all built is like using these kind of pieces with the two studs and then kind of this panel that becomes four wide there same over here uh, which is really really nice same on the other side and then how we do kind of this work for the fender we use some hinge pieces and then put these black tiles on there which are two by four and you kind of have those offset a little bit so they come out just part way we finish that off with those one by three jumpers with the two studs there so that's all really good they do come out just uh, maybe you know two-thirds of a stud out from uh, other spots which is is really really nice uh, the side panels have a, a pretty basic or like the door areas have a pretty basic sub assembly uh, in here using the minifigure kind of roller skate pieces and then we do stack some of these angled plates in there there's very few gaps uh, it looks really really great to me I'm not seeing a ton of like unwanted colors really there's a few places where you, you might see that but I think they did it overall a pretty good job um, kind of covering that up which is really really nice and then uh, as we keep kind of building forward it just uh, it keeps being interesting at the rear if you look behind the wheel you can actually see kind of how those hinges are used to make the fender area there we do have some bricks in here including like there's a two by six um, and there's a couple other bricks up front just so we can see how all this is done uh, again we can see kind of the overlapping of of different plates and jumpers to kind of just extend it out in incremental steps sometimes in odd numbers which I think is pretty impressive I like to see that you know there's a little bit of a technique and and different stuff but uh, overall really really cool the way that the side panels are like the windows are done is nice so they just use these window pieces which are like the dark translucent and we make this whole sub assembly using like the new longer cheese wedge here same over here and then we clip those on to these uh, you know hollow studs with the bar coming off of them so that makes a little bit of a gap there but overall it, it works really really well for me to uh, give us a ton of space make these only like one stud thick but really still feel pretty good so they're clipped on right here clipped on right here I do love the kind of gunmetal gray stripe through this right around the door handles and the logo I think that's nice these metallic silver or drum lacquer or kind of chromed out silver pieces for uh, the I, I don't know the exhaust there is really really cool so I like to see that the rear there's a little bit of gapping here as well so between the rear rear windshield there uh, the back window which is only four studs wide there's a little bit of gap between there and the brackets and then there's a uh, one by two jumper on the brackets and then between that and these kind of panels there's a little bit of a gap as well I don't think you're actually supposed to lean these in a little bit you 
could do that, but I don't think that's intended necessarily. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think they're supposed to be somewhat straight up. It could be that they're supposed to be leaned in a little bit, and then that would kind of fill in some of those gaps. I just wasn't sure if I was able to get the roof on here uh, if I did that. So yeah, I mean, maybe those are supposed to be leaned in a little ways and that can close that up that that may be true otherwise uh, there's not a ton of range of motion for those I think actually yeah maybe I could be convinced that that's supposed to be that way and that does fill in a, a bunch of the gaps we have some a really nice sub assembly for the rear bumper and kind of this whole rear panel here uh, using some brackets and and tons of other stuff these nice angled pieces there some building that uh is going one way when you're building the sub-assembly and then goes a complete different way so nice stuff all throughout here and then the front has some really interesting building techniques as well so uh, there's a lot of accommodations to like the interior to have the steering wheel and everything uh, there is the windshield wipers there which are nice and then all of the detail for the front and that includes building out the fenders the front bumper the grill area the headlight area and then these stuff up here love the use of these pieces which are relatively new uh, but they do appear on like the lambo as well kind of in the rear there those look really really great they're sharp they're clean um, which i like can lift this up on the front and inside here we have tons of interesting stuff so you can see all the different like one by ones and different things in there to make that work if I pop out this uh, piece with the sticker we can see underneath here there's this whole sub assembly that like the SL there's a, a great kind of way to build the grill. Uh, it does use some nice pieces. Again, the gunmetal gray for these kind of pieces. I don't even know what these are called, but um, these are uh, a nice piece to get in this color. And you do get an extra one of those. But we build this out like starting way back here with some hollow stud stuff, a bar element going like all the way through some of this stuff. And then we uh, attach kind of the front windows or the front kind of uh, headlight assembly in a nice way using some uh, of the you know tiles with the bar coming off of it into a hollow stud piece, which is really great. There's uh, tons of extra details like that little handlebar steering yoke back there, some vented pieces in here, these nice angled tiles that are flat. So all that is really good. There's lots of stuff in there. And then the front bumper beneath that is also done in a really cool way. And let me see if I can uh, pop this off in a way that won't destroy everything. So this connects in a couple places here. Uh, but this is its own like sub assembly and again we're working on kind of a odd numbered kind of width here so you can see we have a one by three and a one by four there and then we go maybe one stud out on either side bringing us to nine but we have some upside down building nice to get these slopes in the gunmetal gray uh, and then we have some different building in here some technic uh, uses just a little bit to stud some things down get the angles really nice love how that comes together and then this attaches by um, like having the bar element underneath here you can kind of see that yellow bar or gold bar there uh, it kind of goes into that and then this plate or the tile with the bar the one that I already showed uh, this one kind of thing coming into the hollow stud on there and they're attached together by let me see here by this uh, so there's a lot of really nice building techniques here uh, and overall I, I think that, that I was pretty impressed with this um, I don't know if I'm going to be able to easily get that yellow bar out of there it does go into some Technic axle holes but I'm hoping I'll be able to you know slide this back on relatively easy enough and line up these couple 
spots. So there we go, get that lined up, get these kind of all figured out, and then we can very easily pop back on the headlights here. And I, that, that was all really impressive to me, again, working on kind of that seven stud, nine stud, five stud, three stud, kind of the odd number of stud width throughout this that uh, I really, really enjoyed. It was, it was unique, it was fun to put together, and I was really impressed by how they were able to kind of gradually step out because the, the switch between even and odd and even and odd kind of going through there to kind of finalize this shape was really, really well done. If I said maybe 250 pieces for the uh, SL, the drop top there, the yellow one, this one would therefore have you know over 500 pieces. I feel like that makes sense. Uh, I feel like that adds up because there's a lot into this. It's it's dense, uh, especially the lower part, and then we do have a lot of empty space too, kind of in the interior and everything, but there's lots of great work uh, in this as far as Lego designing goes, Lego building goes, interesting techniques, and I think the end result looks fantastic. I love the profile of this. I love the front here, how the grill and the headlights are done, how the bumper is done the hood is done and I think it looks great from the back too I think it looks great from the top so overall I'm very impressed by this I think I was trying to remember what other speed champion had an SUV and I think it was the Bronco uh, I think there was the Bronco and I know I've covered it before but uh, way back in the day, that was uh, one of the earlier kind of um, sets. And I would love to compare this to the Bronco. I don't have that right next to me. It's kind of with all my other speed champions. Let me actually see if I can go get that and then we can compare these side by side. So give me one moment here. Okay, so I have the Bronco here. It's been a while since I've looked at this, and I'm trying to see here. It looks like this one kind of also had some odd number stuff up at the front. This looks like about seven studs there, uh, and then nine out here, you know, at the and then the wheels sticking out a little bit. They're different wheels than the uh, G-Wagon have there. It's lower to the ground. It does have a lot of interesting building techniques to kind of make this all work. But size-wise, I mean, I guess length, they're pretty close. The Bronco does have some kind of extended back here for where they put these couple spare tires. The G-Wagon is a good amount taller uh, overall, and I lost one of these spare tires there. So let me get this back together. So the G-Wagon is a taller vehicle, um, but these are kind of a nice comparison there and it's yeah it is is interesting to me to see that you know they did have uh in this one as well kind of some odd numbered building you know the roof for this one is is six wide a lot of it is eight wide but it does go out to nine and like having this whole thing done with the two by three and then making it like five studs wide in there this one had some good details as well but it only had kind of two seats there and they weren't the same kind of just chairs but we do have like the roll bars and lots of interesting stuff it was a <laughs> a long time since i looked at the bronco and i i kind of forgot about it um but i i loved this build when i looked at it and um, I still really really like it. I think I might I don't I, I might like the G-Wagon a bit more honestly, but they're they're both really cool and they both feel to me like uh, Interesting things that aren't represented in the speed champions theme that often this and like the uh, there was a, a Like a dragster or whatever that was in another two-pack. I think that one was a Chevy one um, which was like really really long uh, and thin that was cool to see because it was just a different kind of um, uh, speed champion set and then the there was another two-pack I think with the Lamborghini uh, Huracan and a Lamborghini kind of uh, SUV type vehicle as well and again I, I could 
dig that one out but or go find it it's with the other speed champions but um, I'm, I'm not going to do that for for this but I just wanted to compare these and, and this one is bigger and and really really cool I don't know if it's recency bias or just because it's new that I like it more but I thought that was an interesting comparison and that's kind of everything for this speed champion set so you get the two minifigures two vehicles they're both really really well done not a ton of stickers a good amount of new prints new pieces interesting building techniques and uh, welcome additions to the speed champions eight wide era i think so that's really great i'll show the extra pieces because you do get a fair amount here uh, including some of these extra like hubcap type pieces there they come in a pack of eight uh, that have these ones with you know more spokes spokes or whatever I don't know what they were called but these ones have five and these ones have however many um, that are so you do get extra of those because the G-Wagon does use bigger wheels and then has these kind of nice uh, pieces for the rims there and then the rest of the extra pieces I will grab there's some good inclusions in here I would say uh, so some good prints and, and different stuff um, we do get an extra of each of the cheese wedges that are printed because those had to be different for the front of the SL drop top there. We do get extras of the Mercedes logo print, I believe, if I can find it. Here's one right here, which is nice. Good to get, you know, an extra of this piece, extra of the piece for the kind of uh, screen in the drop top as well so different prints in here which is all uh, good one of these kind of rounded one by two pieces and then uh, here's the other Mercedes logo they are not the same so that's actually two different prints there and it might be a little hard to see the difference but I'll try to show it as best as I can but as far as I can tell they are different prints different uh, versions of the same thing so this one has kind of a little bit of black uh, coming through and like the outline of kind of the three pointed thing and then this other one has just like silver and gray so uh, if you can see up close I, I don't have the best uh, ability to show those but these are different than each other so you get an extra one of each of that and that's because you know the one on the g-wagon is is different than the one on the uh, drop top there which is is cool to see so a lot of good extra pieces your one by ones your studs your tiles your bar elements any like technic pins the roller skate piece uh, all of that good stuff including all those extra prints uh, and this set is 808 pieces and it retails for 45 dollars that's what i paid for it so right off the bat you know 10 cents per piece uh maybe this should be an 80 dollars set it's not um and it shouldn't be uh it wouldn't have been worth 80 dollars but there is a lot of pieces here this is a big speed champions double pack the other one the aston martin one that i've referenced kind of the formula one one i think has maybe 400 500 maybe in a 600 piece range but I, i'm not positive that one might only be in the 500 piece range which for both of those vehicles might be as many pieces as just the g-wagon here and uh, i think when breaking this down i said at the beginning the two packs are better value when considering a single one for $27 you get the two pack for you know 45 so these are maybe 20 to 50 a piece I think if they release this as a single pack just the g-wagon the AMG G63 here for $27 I wouldn't have complained about that at all and that's uh, interesting because I anticipated the price range when it went from 20 to 25 and then from 25 to 27 I appreciate I anticipated not liking that and really rebelling against that and being angered by it and finding these not worth it and pricing people out of this theme but the design and the builds for these the quality of these speed champions models it keeps getting better in my opinion and so like I was fine with the 27 for the Lambo here even though it's got a lot fewer pieces um, if that means we get more prints and more new pieces and recolors and stuff which is true for a lot of these $27 
you know, single packs, I think that makes sense. If this was a single pack car with just this one and not the drop top, I think 27 would be kind of a great deal given the amount of stuff here, the weight to this, the quality of the build, the quality of the end model. But because it's in this one, you know, it's interesting because I maybe said for the SL63, I, I might have thought that this wouldn't be great at $27, and I think that's still true. Maybe maybe $20, maybe $25, $22.50 or whatever, and that's essentially what these equate to in terms of price and value if we just divide it in half. Uh, realistically, maybe this is $30 and this one is $15, and that gets us to $45, and yeah, maybe this is two-thirds of the set, and this is one-third of the set, and I'm, I'm comfortable with that. I think that would make sense and if they sold these in individual packs I don't think we would get that good of a deal if this was $30 I still don't think they are making this one for less than 20 or selling it for less than 20 because I, they just wouldn't so I think this is an excellent two pack with excellent value really really fun super cool to have I, I would love for Lego to keep making kind of interesting vehicles for the speed champions line and kind of expanding it and, and keep pushing it because I've been really impressed by all the speed champions for 2024 and and from the other recent years and this is no different so I love this I think this is a great deal the two packs are a good deal it'll be interesting to look at the Aston Martin one after this because uh, it's the same price with far fewer pieces still two vehicles and we can kind of uh, evaluate that when the time comes. But overall, for like what's in the box for this set, this two-pack Mercedes AMG set from the Speed Champion line, I think these are tremendous. I, I really, really liked these. I mean, this one I'm less keen on, uh, but it's better than I thought I was going to think it was I, I you know I, when this was announced and leaked and when it was officially released the images of it I wasn't super thrilled about the drop top yellow vehicle here but I was really really excited about the SUV and having this this did exceed my expectations it's still not nearly as good as many other speed champions in my opinion but I think the uh, G63 here really exceeded my expectations uh, and or met them and exceeded them and is one of the one of my favorite maybe speed champions I've I've ever built and uh, that's uh, really impressive to me so uh, I'm a big big fan of this set I think the value is quite good the minifigures are fine but um, that's not necessarily why I buy speed champion sets and so I really 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 liked this um, and I think that's it so great if you like this video please click the thumbs up and give it a like if you like my other videos click the subscribe button down below so you can stay up to date on all the Lego videos I'll be doing here in the future including more Lego speed champions uh, and then tons of other Lego sets from all different themes all different shapes size price point piece count tons of different stuff so subscribe so you don't miss any of those upcoming Lego videos if you want to enter the giveaway, go find that video. Um, you have to be subscribed to my channel, so if you want a chance to win a poly bag or maybe an Ahsoka brickhead or something, um, check out that video, leave a comment, like that video, subscribe to my channel. That helps me a lot. Subscribing is a great way to show support. I appreciate it. We're on the road to 2,000 subscribers, so uh, thank you, everybody. And then if you wanted to support this channel in a different way um, and get your name kind of over in the corner at the end of my videos um, and you wanted to like support the channel by giving money, you could do that here on YouTube with membership, supers, and thanks. And I have the Patreon. It's in the video description on my channel page patreon.com slash so bricks and you can get access to my videos early some exclusive videos which i'm going to be updating in the very near future um, and it's just a big help for the channel not necessary but it means a lot to me and will help this continue to be um you know a a a possible thing but uh, i just love doing this it's really really fun so thank you people who watch and people who give that's really really terrific and it means a lot to me so thank you very much and with all of that said until next time, thanks, bye.